March 2009. Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, 50 miles east of San Francisco, California. This is one of the premier weapons research facilities in the U.S. Over the past 50 years, scientists here have developed some of the most lethal weapons known to man. From the Atlas Titan intercontinental ballistic missile to the Tomahawk cruise missile. But today, inside a special division of the lab known as the National Ignition Facility, scientists are developing one of the most challenging experimental systems ever created the world's most powerful laser. Scientists have been working on this top secret project since 1974. The goal, create a laser that produces energy levels that rival the power of a nuclear bomb. When fired, this laser is capable of unleashing the power of the sun, enough energy to light up every home in the US or wipe out mankind. How do they create a laser with such devastating force? By assembling an array of 192 lasers and aiming them at a single hydrogen pellet the size of a BB. What we can do is focus this very high energy into a very small spot for a very short time. And when that happens, we get the conditions that are very much like inside our sun. These gray tubes right over my head here are the beam tubes which contain the laser beams. You can see there are pairs of these beam tubes. In each one of these tubes, there are laser beams stacked four high. So in each pair of beam tubes, there are eight laser beams. The plan is to fire all 192 laser beams at once. Each beam starts out low powered, about the size of what's inside your DVD player. But as they pass through the complex maze of tubes, they merge into one super beam. The super beam fires 500 terawatts of power in two billionths of a second, roughly 500 times the entire peak power output of the United States. When that light strikes the hydrogen pellet, it cooks it to over 800 million degrees, creating nuclear fusion and unleashing more energy than our sun. If any of you have seen Star Wars, or simply haven't been living under a rock lately, you'll know that the Death Star of this fictional universe is one of the most powerful pieces of fantasy tech on the big screen. And for years, scientists have speculated about its power, but they always end up throwing up their hands saying, nope, it can't be done. The science of the Death Star is still science fiction. You see, the Death Star is powered by eight kyber crystals, which, by the way, are not real things in real life. And it uses these to combine all of its laser beams into one super beam something that has not been possible in a real life lab until now. So today we are inside the target bay of Lawrence Livermore's National Ignition Facility. Check it out. For the first time ever, researchers at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory's National Ignition Facility have successfully combined nine of the facility's laser beams, of which there are 192, into one singular laser beam with quadruple the energy of any of the individual beams. This accomplishment has pushed the boundaries of what has previously been possible in laser physics, and researchers made this happen in rather a surprising way. It was only when I was recently finalizing one of the first um, beam combiner designs that I looked at the geometry and I said, hey, that looks like the Death Star. And that material at the crossing point, that's plasma. So intense laser systems are, have been built with conventional optics that are made of solids because solids can be very precisely shaped and that's important to direct the light in a precise direction and make a beam with good focal qualities. A plasma is a hot compressible gas that naturally expands and changes its shape. So it's not something that people have thought much about or, or tried much as a material for optics. But a laser beam has its own structure. And when the laser beam gets very intense, it can impart its own structure determined by its wavelength to the plasma to scatter light from one beam to another and amplify the beam. And that's the essential ingredient of the beam combiner. 
Okay, now let's get one thing straight. The NIF uses its powers for good and not for evil, and it's not going anywhere with its super beam. Like, it's not gonna levitate, and it certainly can't blast off into space. When these lasers go online in 2010, are we looking at the dawn of a new age in energy? Or are we looking at something else? A preview of the incomprehensible power that man could wield to fight the wars of the future. An effective laser weapon for use on the battlefield needs only a fraction of this power to destroy fighter jets, shoot down nuclear missiles, wipe out entire armies. Tomorrow's battles could look like a scene out of Star Wars. Powerful lasers on Earth beamed off of satellites in space to wipe out an enemy thousands of miles away. If you have a powerful enough laser and a few properly positioned targeting satellites in orbit to reflect the beam, then you could fire a laser here in North America and deliver its energy to any spot on the surface of the Earth. If you have a powerful enough laser and a few properly positioned targeting satellites in orbit to reflect the beam, then you could fire a laser here in North America and deliver its energy to any spot on the surface of the Earth. It's not inconceivable that someday we will actually be able to produce that sort of death ray.